Good evening. I have recently returned from the Horn, if you'll pardon the expression, <laughs> of, of Africa, where Gervais, that's my husband by marriage, <laughs> and I have been missionaries for the past 12 years or so. When we were first married, Gervais had a little church right up in the far northwest of Scotland. <laughs> but it was extremely cold there, and my husband's stipend was very small. <laughs> so we opted to become missionaries, and I must say the warm climate seems to suit him better. <laughs> All our time in Africa has been spent living and working among the Uagadugu tribe. They are pygmies, you know no more than four feet or so high, and often I would see them wandering naked through the long stemmed thistle down with great broad grins on their faces, <laughs> giggling with each other as if something had tickled their fancy. <laughs> the, the name of their village, Ouagadougou, comes from their own language, which roughly translated means turn left at the cesspool and mind where you put your feet. <laughs> Would alas that we had known this that first day Gervais and I <laughs> arrived at the village. <coughs> As we approached the large wooden entrance gate, all the natives were gesticulating. <laughs> it was probably the hot weather. <laughs> and then they started waving at us and shouting, Woolamooga, Woolamooga. Taking this to be some sort of greeting, Gervais and I hurried through the gate and found ourselves up to here in Woolamooga. <laughs> some time before the Ouagadougous ventured near us. Although, although they did very kindly offer us a little hut to sleep in, just downwind of them. When, when we eventually made contact, the witch doctor, a charming man, taught us how to use the damn sorath when entering or leaving the village through the wooden gate. The damn Soras turned out to be a rather large pair of old wellies, and <laughs> incidentally it was Gervais, ever ready with a statistic, who pointed out that the wellies were 27 inches high, and the witch doctor's inside leg measurement was 22. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't go out very much. <laughs> It was, it was probably he, too, who gave them the name of Damn Sora. <laughs> uh, what, what happy days we spent there in Ouagadougou. I taught the children to read and write some sort of basic English, and Gervais ran the bingo hall in the casino. <laughs> I introduced the children to two books, the Bible, and for very good reasons, Plummet Yourself by H.D. Balcock. <laughs> In this way, of course, they would learn to care for their brethren and at the same time look after their system. <laughs> the, uh, the children were marvelous. What a sense of humor they had and such great practical jokers. I never knew from one night to the next what I would find in my bed. A snake, a scorpion, a tarantula. One night I actually found Gervais. <laughs> I think the rascals must have put something in his tea. <laughs> School, of course, was always out of doors. I would wear a wide, cool skirt and blouse, and the boys, nothing at all. And let me tell you, I have never... We, we all learned... <laughs> we all learned a great deal from each other. And when, of course, when we got thirsty, I would say to the boys, now, up tree you, get coconut. And laughing, they'd reply, no, up tree us, up you. <laughs> and so, of course, I'd have to climb the tree and the boys would stand underneath laughing as they looked up, me, up at me. <laughs> Ah, those dear boys, some of them must be 18 or 19 now, and I can hardly wait to see how they've grown. <laughs> Gervais! <laughs> Gervais, on the other hand, is, is not so keen to go back. He and the witch doctor, alas, had a slight altercation on one occasion, and 
Gervais lost his temper. <laughs> I'm afraid he told the witch doctor where to stick his wellies. <laughs> Didn't you, dear? <laughs> Good night.